All right. So, you know, sometimes it feels like every tech person has the same background, like yeah. comp site agree, and then boom, search right. to coding. Right. But you, our listeners, you sent us info on this guy, Ken Dawson. Uh-huh. And wow, totally different story. Yeah. Uh, he started in fine arts. Really? Yeah. So I got to ask, like, what does a painter or like a sculptor even know about building software? I mean, it's wild. Wow. Out. So that's what we're going to unpack in this deep dive today. It is really interesting how Dawson like takes that artistic way of thinking uh -huh. yeah. and uh, applies it to the business world. OK. It's almost like he treats a company like a brand new culture, you know, right. like an anthropologist or something. Uh -huh. He watches teams work. He sees how information's moving. Interesting. And uh, figures out where the problems are, you know, the friction points. Mm. Almost like a detective hunting for clues. But instead of a crime, he's solving for inefficiency. Exactly. So it's not just about the code. Right. He's really like trying to understand the people. Oh, totally. He spends a lot of time with employees. Mm -hmm. At every level, you know, from like the CEO all the way down to the interns. Wow. And he's not just, you know, looking at spreadsheets. Yeah. He's watching how people actually work with each other. Oh, interesting. And how they use the tech every day. You know, I've definitely worked in places where it felt like the tech was working against us. Oh. Yeah, like five different systems and they don't even talk to each other. Oh, I know. So you're constantly switching back and forth, copying and pasting. Oh, yeah. And hoping that nothing gets lost in the cracks. Fingers crossed, right? I bet a lot of our listeners have been there. Oh, for sure. It's super common. Yeah. And such a waste of time and energy. Ugh, so frustrating. Think about it, right? You got one system for payroll, another for projects, oh. and something else for customer stuff. And yeah. none of it's connected. It's such a mess. It really is like trying to cook you know, a fancy meal, but using three different kitchens Ugh. in three different houses. Oh, that's a good one. It's just nuts. Okay, so I get the problem. Yeah. But how does Dawson actually fix it? Okay. Does he just make custom versions of the same programs? Yeah. But like make welcome. them magically talk to each other? It's more than that. Okay. He does build custom software, uh -huh. but it's not just about you know, copying what's already there. Right. It's about figuring out how each business works, their own yeah. unit way. Yeah. And then he designs a system to like connect everything. Got it. He calls it connecting the disconnected. I like that. Yeah. But can you give me like a, a real world example? I what does that actually look like? Okay. So let's take onboarding a new employee. Okay. Usually it's a nightmare, right? Oh, yeah. Mountains of paperwork. Nobody knows who to contact. Ugh. So stressful. For everyone. Cool. Yeah. But Dawson's way, the whole thing streamlined. Okay. New hire logs in and the system walks them through it. Uh huh. Every step, like filling out tax forms, yeah. setting up their email. It's and nice. All automatic and personalized just for them. That sounds amazing. Right. Not only for the new employee, uh -huh. makes them feel welcome, yeah. but also saves the company so much time and hassle. Exactly. It's a win win. Totally. And that's a big part of Dawson's whole philosophy. What's that? Technology should work for people. Okay. Not the other way around. I like that. So by streamlining, you know, getting rid of the boring stuff, right. it frees people up to focus on the work that matters. So you're saying his art background actually comes into play here. I think so. He's not just building software. Yeah. He's designing an experience. That's a great way to put it. And I'm guessing happier employees means happier customers. Oh, absolutely. When things run smoothly inside. Mm -hmm. That good feeling, you know, it extends outward to the customer, too. Makes sense. Imagine you call a company and you get transferred like five times oh God. before you reach the right person. The worst. It's just frustrating for everyone. We've all been there Ugh, on hold forever. Yeah. Explaining your problem again and again. Makes you want to scream. I know, right? Okay, so with Dawson's system, yeah. the customer's info is right there. Exactly. Everything's tracked. Yep. Their needs are anticipated. It's a much more personal and positive experience. Right. They feel heard and understood, and yeah. that builds trust and loyalty. It's like the difference between listening to a scratchy old record uh -huh. and streaming, you know, a high fidelity track. Yes. Everything's just smoother. More enjoyable. It's all about creating that seamless flow right. of information and experience. Both inside and outside the company. Exactly. Okay, so we've got happy employees. Yeah. Happy customers. Check and check. But what about the business itself? Oh. I imagine this kind of system provides like mm. valuable data. You got it. For decision making. That's one of the big benefits. Wait. It's like having a live dashboard uh -huh. showing exactly how everything's performing.
So instead of just gut feelings right, or yeah. like old reports, yeah, you have real time data to inform decisions. Exactly. You can see customer interactions, yeah. project timelines, uh -huh. employee performance. So many metrics. All of it. Wow. It's like the holy grail. It really is. But I want to circle back to Dawson's art background. Okay. We talked about the practical stuff. Mm -hmm. But how does he see this affecting the whole work environment? You know what's really cool? Yeah. Dawson sees his work as a way to reduce friction oh. between staff and customers and management. Mm. So by getting rid of those frustrating, inefficient things, yeah. you can create a more collaborative, okay. supportive workplace. Where everyone can thrive. Exactly. So it's not just efficiency. Right. It's about a more harmonious environment overall. Exactly. He believes that by getting rid of those frustrating, inefficient things, you can create a more collaborative, supportive workplace. Interesting. Where everyone can thrive. It's like he's taking those principles of like design and aesthetics yeah and applying them to business that's it instead of a painting uh -huh. he's crafting a work environment a beautiful and functional one i love that it's a cool perspective right yeah in a world that can feel so like cold and impersonal with tech totally dawson's showing us that tech can actually make human connections better and improve well-being exactly and that's what makes his work so interesting yeah. it's not just about websites or software. Uh -huh. It's about using tech to create a better experience for everyone. For everyone involved. Exactly. And that's something we can all learn from. Absolutely. So let's take a second to reflect here. Okay. What stands out to you about Dawson's approach? Mm -hmm. What really resonates? Yeah. And where do you see the potential for this kind of positive change uh -huh. in your own work life? Good question. You know, it's funny how often we just accept things the way they are with technology. Like, we get frustrated with clunky systems or, like, tedious tasks, uh -huh. but we don't always stop and ask if there's a better way. It's like we're so used to it, we don't even realize we could change it. Right. But Dawson's work is a good reminder that we can be more uh, intentional yeah. about how we use technology. Totally. We don't have to just be passive consumers. Uh -huh. We could be active creators. Exactly. And that's what's so exciting about this whole approach it is it's about like taking back control yeah and designing systems that are good for us right and that help us reach our goals you know it reminds me of design thinking oh yeah where you start by really understanding the needs of the people you're designing for i see that it's not about forcing a solution right it's about making something that works and is human-centered. That's a great point. And it shows how this approach isn't just for software. Okay. These principles can apply to anything where tech is involved. Like what? I don't know, like designing a new product, uh -huh. a marketing campaign, right. even just organizing your own work. Right. There's always room for this kind of human-centered thinking. I love that. It's about finding that balance. Yeah. Where tech helps us do more. Uh-huh and frees us up to focus on what really matters. Exactly. I remember reading about this small business. Okay. They were struggling to keep up with customer orders. Oh no. They were using spreadsheets and sticky notes to track everything. Oh. Total mess. Sounds like it. But then they implemented a system like Dawson's. Really? And it changed everything. Wow. They could process orders faster. Uh-huh. Fewer errors. Nice. Happier customers. That's awesome. It's a great example of how even small businesses can benefit. Yeah, for sure. It's not just for big companies with tons of money. Right. The key is to focus on the pain points. Yeah. The places where tech is making things harder, not easier, yeah. and then find creative solutions to streamline things. It's almost like taking a step back uh -huh. and looking at your work with fresh eyes. I like that. Where are the bottlenecks? Yeah. Where are people getting stuck? Right. And how can tech help bridge those gaps? Create a smoother flow. Exactly. It's about creating that sense of harmony and flow uh -huh. where everything feels connected and has a purpose. Instead of feeling like you're fighting against the tech. Right. You're working with it. In sync. To get more done and oh. feel good about it. Exactly. And wouldn't that lead to a more positive work experience overall? Definitely. I mean, if you're always stressed and frustrated by the tools you're using, yeah, it's going to affect your morale and productivity. For sure. And that's where the data insights are so valuable. Okay. It's not just about collecting data for no reason. Right. It's about using it to make things better. To create a better work environment. Exactly. So how does that work in practice? Can you give me an example of how data could actually improve employee well-being? Okay. So 
let's say a company sees that people are quitting a lot in one department. Yeah. Instead of just assuming it's about salary or the manager, uh -huh. they could use data from their system to look deeper. Okay. Maybe the data shows that employees in that department are always working late oh. or have way too much to do. So the data can reveal hidden patterns of stress or burnout. Exactly. That you might not notice otherwise. And once you see those patterns, yeah. the company can take action. Likewise. Maybe adjust workloads, okay. provide more training, oh. or implement new tools to streamline things. I see. The point is the data gives you valuable insights that right. you can use to create a more supportive and sustainable work environment. It's like a diagnostic tool for your organization. Totally. Helping you find the areas that need attention. And that brings us back to Dawson's idea of technology serving people. Yeah. It's not about replacing humans with machines. Uh -huh. It's about giving humans better tools. I like that. And that's a vision that resonates with a lot of people. Especially now with tech changing so fast. Yeah. It is. We're all trying to figure out how to use tech's power. Uh huh. Without losing our humanity. Dawson's work gives us a glimpse of what's possible yeah. when we approach technology with intention and creativity. It's a reminder that we can shape the future of work. We can create systems that are not just efficient. But also enjoyable and fulfilling. Absolutely. And it's not just about ourselves. Right. It's about a better future for everyone. If we can use tech to foster collaboration. Yeah. Creativity and well-being. Imagine the possibility. It's inspiring to think about. It is. As we wrap up this deep dive into Ken Dawson's work. Uh-huh. I feel optimistic. Me too. And like, there's so much potential. It's like he's showing us a path forward. Yeah. A way to create a more human-centered world. Even with all the tech advancement. Exactly. And it's a path we can all choose. Regardless of our job or career. We can all be agents of change. Using tech to create a better experience. For ourselves and those around us. So as you go about your day, keep Dawson's philosophy in mind. Look for those opportunity. To use tech to improve your own work life. And create a more positive and harmonious experience. For yourself and those around you. Yeah. Maybe it's just like automating some little task that's been driving you nuts. Oh yeah. Or maybe it's taking a closer look at the data you already have uh -huh. and finding a new way to visualize it. Oh, interesting. So you can make better decisions. I like that. And hey, you might find that those small changes actually spark bigger bolder ideas oh totally ideas that could like spread and inspire positive change yeah not just in your team uh -huh. but across your whole organization it's like dawson said it's about creating harmony right not just in the systems but in the human connections too he's really challenging us to rethink the role of technology yeah to see it as a tool for empowering people not just for efficiency that's a powerful message and i think it's something we can all relate to absolutely no matter what kind of work we do so as we wrap up this deep dive into ken dawson's world mm -hmm. what's one thing you'll take away mm. what's one small step you can take today yeah. to make your work life a little more harmonious we'd love to hear your thoughts yeah share them with us on social media or drop us a line and in the meantime Keep experimenting, keep innovating. And keep that curiosity alive. Because the future of work isn't something that just happens to us. Right. It's something we create together. One thoughtful, human-centered solution at a time. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the art of custom software. We hope you found it insightful and inspiring. Until next time, keep diving depth and keep exploring those possibilities.